Hi guys, I am Suprabha. In this video, we will see the examples asked in GATE in the year 16 for CSA. The first example is, two eigenvalues of 3 into 3 real matrix P are 2 plus root minus 1 and 3. They have asked to find the value of determinant of P. Now, as we know, for 3 into 3 matrix, there will be 3 eigenvalues. They have, they have specified two values, 2 plus root minus 1 and 3. Now, we know the value of root minus 1 that is j. So, this value becomes 2 plus j. Now, we know that eigenvalues are roots of characteristic equation. So, if the one of the eigenvalues 2 plus j, the other value will be 2 minus j because the roots will be complex conjugates. Now, we know one of the property that says determinant of any matrix is equal to product of eigenvalues. And the three eigenvalues are 2 plus j, 2 minus j and 3. Multiplying all these three eigenvalues we get 4 minus j square into 3 that is j square is 1, 4 plus 1 into 3 that is 15. So, the determinant value of p is 15. Please remember this property that determinant of any matrix is nothing but product of eigenvalues. The second example, suppose that eigenvalues of matrix A are 1, 2, 4. Find out the determinant value of A inverse of transpose. Again using the same property, we can say that the eigenvalues are 1, 2, 4. Using the same property, we get determinant of A is equal to 8. Now, one of the property of determinant says that determinant of A inverse is equal to 1 by determinant of that matrix. So, determinant of A inverse will be 1 by 8. We have already found out the value of determinant of A. There is one more property that states determinant of A inverse transpose is equal to determinant of A inverse. A inverse we have found out the value. So, determinant of A inverse transpose is nothing but 1 by 8. The, again the property used in this example is determinant of any matrix is nothing but product of eigenvalues. The third example, let a1, a2, a3 and a4 be 4 matrices of dimension 10 into 5, 5 into 20, 20 into 10, 10 into 15 respectively. That is dimension of a1 is 10 into 5, a2, 5 into 20 and so on. Then minimum number of scalar multiplications required to find out the product a1, a2, a3, a4 you, using the basic matrix multiplication method is. So, we are supposed to find out the scalar multiplications required for this product. Okay. Let us consider that product. Now, the dimensions are 10 into 5, 5 into 20, 20 into 10, and 10 into 5. Now, the scalar the number of scalar multiplications will depend upon the size of the matrix. So, we will multiply matrices in such a way that the size of the matrix will be small. If the size is small, the number of scalar multiplications required will be small. Now, if we multiply a1, a2 first, the size will be 10 into 20. If we multiply a2, a3, size is 5 into 10 and if we multiply a3, a4 first, the size is 20 into 5. So, we can conclude that if we multiply a2 and a3 first, the size will be small. a2, a3, size will be 5 into 10. Now, we are supposed to find out the number of scalar multiplications. For that, we will see a small example. Consider a matrix 2 by 2 and 2 by 3. These two can be multiplied because 
number of columns of this is equal to number of rows of this matrix so the resulting size will be 2 into 3 now see to find out this element we multiply this with this plus this with this so two multiplications are required again for this second element we multiply this this with this and this with this sorry this and this this and this sorry the second column so again two multiplications will will be required similarly we can say that for all the elements for each element two matrix two multiplications will be required so the number of scalar multiplications are 12 if we add all this the shortcut method to find out is 2 multiply with 2 consider only 1 2 here 2 into 2 4 into 3 gives 12 ok so the size of sorry if now the number of scalar multiplications here will be 5 into 20 into 10 that gives 1000 now we have multiplied two matrices let us multiply this resulting matrix with the next matrix now again we will go for the size if we multiply this resulting matrix with this matrix so the size will be 10 into 10 and if we multiply this resulting matrix with this matrix this size will be 5 into 5 so we will multiply it with a4 now the number of scalar multiplications of this resulting matrix will be the resulting matrix will be sorry 5 into 10 50 into 5 that is 250 now multiply this resulting matrix with the a1 for this the required scalar multiplications are 10 into 5 10 into 5 50 into 5 again 250 so in three steps we got the three number of scalar multiplication we will simply add this the result is 1500 the thing to be remembered in this example is that the resulting matrix should be small the size of that matrix should be small so the number of scalar multiplications required will be small so the for the product a1 a2 a3 a4 1500 scalar multiplications are required next example consider system consisting of m linear equations in n variables the first statement is if m is less than n then the system will have solution if m is greater than n none of the system has solution and the third statement says if both are equal then system has solution three statements are given option a says all the three statements are true second says only two and three are true option third says only three is true and the fourth says none of the statement is true now we will analyze each statement if m is less than n that is number of equations is less than number of unknowns let us consider one equation suppose this is any equation this is only one equation m is 1 n is 2 so there will be no value as both the x both x and y are unknown so here there will be no solutions but the statement says that all the systems have solution but no solution is possible so this statement is false now the second statement for second statement let us consider equations m is greater than n so we will consider this is just an example you can you can consider any set of equations now here there are three equations and two unknowns x and y now if you solve these equations will 
find that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. So, this is the unique solution that is possible. Now, the statement says none of these system have solution, but solution is possible. So, again statement 2 is false. For the third statement, we will consider the same equations again where m is equal to n. So, two equations, two unknowns. Again, we know that value will be x equal to 1, y equal to 1. Now, unique solution is possible and this statement says that system has solution. So, this statement is true. Now, we will go for options. A, all are true? No. B, only second and third are true? Again, wrong. This third statement says that only this statement 3 is true. So, the answer of this is C. That is, statement 3 is true. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching my video. Hope you understood the concept. For handwritten notes, just check out the link in the video description. For any doubts and suggestions, please let me know in the comment box. These are few videos that you can refer. Guys, help us to help you. So, please like and share my video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.